Hey, do you remember Hero 108? Hero 108 is a Chinese, American, British, Canadian, goddamn everything knees animated television series created by Yang Ming Tarn and aired on Cartoon Network and Kabillion. It's a really obscure animated series that I see practically no one talk about these days, not even in my Lost Media video that I mentioned it in. A lot of people knew the other entries, especially Baby Maker, but no one seemed to know what this show is. But I suppose I'll have to be the one to answer the question of what it is, so without further ado, let's get on with the review. Commander Ape truly is in trouble! First Squad, deploy! The premise of the show is actually quite simple. Once, humans and animals live together in harmony until the show's main villain named High Roller convinced the animals that humans were their enemies and commenced a war between the two parties. This continued until an organization named Big Green emerged to fight against High Roller and end the war. The series as a whole can kind of be summarized as both formulaic and non-formulaic, which sounds terrible, but in practice it's done perfectly and it suits the show quite well. Most of season 1 involves a certain animal kingdom harassing nearby humans, likely due to High Roller and the Zebra Brothers meddling with things. And Ape Truly, head of Big Green, takes it upon himself to extend an invitation to the head of that kingdom to join Big Green and stop the harassment. Of course, this usually never works, and Ape Truly gets captured and calls for help with his radio umbrella thingy. To which, first squad of Big Green will be dispatched immediately. First Squad ends up detaining the animals of the kingdom, but will only join Big Green if they succeed in a competition, kinda similar to Shaolin Showdown except First Squad always manages to win the competition despite the unfair balance. The only reason why I called the first season somewhat non-formulaic is that though the majority of the episodes follow this formula, a lot of them stray away from following the path the viewer would expect them to go. For instance, in the Frog Castle episode, to defeat Frog King's choir, they call for the help of the Do Re Mi band to defeat them in a musical battle because every 2010s cartoon seems to need a musical battle of some sort to happen during the series. And many other first season episodes deviated from the norm of what the series had established or just revolved around a plot that was completely different such as High Roller's mini competitions. Season 2 is where things really change and become more dramatic. It introduces a new villain called Twin Mold, I mean Twin Rova, I mean Twin Masters, who I'll just say right now I'm not terribly big of a fan of. He's just kind of an uninteresting mash of fire and ice and simply wants the destruction of all life with no reason to do so, other than the fact that he has the ability to. High Roller is by no means an outstanding villain, but he at least had qualities that made him a conniving snake that was fun to follow sometimes. Twin Master simply doesn't compare, especially when compared to the other characters of the series. I think one of Hero 108's biggest strong suit, if not its strong suit, is its vast array of characters. I don't know why, but I seem to be naturally attracted to pieces of media that center around a large group of entities who fall under one title. Stuff like Hero 108, Kids Next Door, Pokemon, Persona, the US government. Each member of First Squad has a variety of different abilities at their disposal, which more often than not seems to be useful in taking down enemies so long as they are used wisely. Not only do all of First Squad have a lot of abilities, but they all feel like a natural extension of the character's design and personality, and not something tacked on or forgotten about. Linchunk's harmony abilities notwithstanding. Contrast this with, say, Steven Universe, where all the gems have a large number of abilities as well, but they all seem to be forgotten by the writers. The animals of each kingdom also have very interesting character designs and abilities that come from such designs, such as the rhinos using stamps fixated on their horns and the such. It's all well thought out and planned, and it really makes these characters pop and feel inspired. While we're on the topic of character design though, this would be a perfect chance for us to transition into talking about the art and animation of the show. The art style of Hero 108 is completely unique from anything I've seen before, giving off an origami vibe with its designs, which looks amazing. The style translates well with the animal designs that make them recognizable whilst also looking sleek and stylized. 
The animation of the first few episodes relied heavily on tweening and flash, which doesn't look the best, but as the series progresses, the quality rises, especially with the second season, where the animation quality spiked drastically. The series also employs the use of CGI in certain scenes. Sometimes it blends well and other times it doesn't, but overall it's pretty okay. It's not overused and it's only really used in fight scenes and the like. Music also plays a part in the series. Whilst it's not as in your face as modern cartoons, Hero 108 still has an appreciation for music and it uses it a lot. Most obviously, Rattle Diva and the Do Re Mi Band perform music on a few occasions on the show, but music is also used in more subtle ways as well. The theme that plays when Ape truly calls for help is a staple of each episode and is arranged in different ways throughout the series and is composed well. Whenever Mighty Ray uses an electrical attack, a guitar riff and drum beat plays, emphasizing his more radical and more rash nature. When emphasis is placed on Lin Chung, the music is tranquil, featuring Asian wind instruments. And the big green turtles even have their own theme that complements their aquatic nature. A show doesn't need to constantly shove in musical segments with characters singing in order for it to effectively use music to set its mood, and Hero 108 illustrates this perfectly. Hero 108 is a show with a lot of style and a lot of charm, and a good story as well, and it's a shame that no one really remembers it or mentions it anymore. If you want to check it out, it's free on YouTube, or you could buy the series on Amazon, but why? Anyways, this is my review of Hero 108, an obscure 2010 uh, cartoon that really no one talks about. Now if you excuse me, I'll go to something else because I basically wasted 10 plus hours of my life watching this show. <laughs> See you later.